Hey church, welcome back to the 28 days through Matthew. Today we're in Matthew chapter 23. So quick overview, because this one's only got two bullet points, is that Yeshua calls out the actions of the scribes and the Pharisees. And then at the very end of this chapter, we see that Yeshua cries or laments over Jerusalem. Now it's always interesting when you see a chapter like this, because a lot of the previous chapters have had multiple broken up sections and stories, but this one's almost fully dedicated to one single instance. So um, let's boil this down. Um, and obviously it's very, very much easily understood that this is an anti-hypocrisy chapter. Um, but let's see if it can help us with guiding us on some things. So as believers, I think this, this chapter right here will help us to develop into humble, honest, true followers. So let's go to a section with verse two through 11. Um, where it really it's saying that to do nothing to put yourself into a status position, except for being steadfast and faithful to the works the Lord has handed you. Allow God to lift you up and don't put yourself into that position. Uh, obviously we as humans, are, we're so arrogant and we desire the fancy treatment, but hardly are we ever willing to put in the work to, to plant the crops, to do the things that would produce the fruit that would give us those situations that would give us that um, positional authority. We don't want to put in the labor. We just want the reward. Um, so obviously this is a good section that we understand with the Pharisees and the scribes of what he's talking about and how they would constantly lift themselves up or desire to be at the head seats of these tables. And this is how you can always tell if a person has gotten into a position for the wrong reason. Um, the arrogance is palpable. Uh, too many people walk around saying things like, I want to be a teacher, I want to be a pastor, but not enough people are honestly just walking around saying like, I want to do exactly what God asks of me. If I spend my entire life just planting seeds and watering those seeds that God allows me to, that's enough. Um, instead of wanting and desiring to be these great things, like be grateful and do good with the little, Obviously we see that throughout scripture and that, that section, um, we can kind of see yet again through verses 12 through 15. Then if we go to, uh, the section of verses 16 through 23, we can see that we need to keep ourselves focused on what is good and humble ourselves by remembering that the position of status and that the items of the church are pointless if it wasn't for the one that gives them significance. The church property, the tithe, the people that work for the church aren't sacred but they are sanctified by the one who owns them. It's often like the picture that I saw in my head as I'm reading this is I'm thinking about in Toy Story where you lift up the, the characters uh, and flip them over and it says, Andy. Honestly, like everything that we see that these items that we typically hold sacred, they aren't sacred because they are this holy thing. It's because they have a label underneath them that says property of Yahweh. It is the ownership of that thing that gives it significance. Um, otherwise, there's no real value. Okay, so then let's go for a little bit further forward and we're going into verses 23 through 28. Lastly, I wanted to focus on this section and this one should hit a lot of us eager beaver, full Bible believers as we start to see the commandments and we're always trying to adopt these things and do them to the best of the ability, like cranking it up to 11 so that we are like, we become these believers that are action based. We're we are not doing it because of our faith. We think that if we do these deeds and we do them to the best of our ability, that we're going to do a great job and that God will look at us and say, good, good job, good and faithful servant. But unfortunately, a lot of those things weren't ever even asked of us in that way. It, it says in the section of scripture that they would filter out a gnat, but they're chugging camels, which is going to be an adopted phrase that I use somehow throughout life. Um, but the thing is that they were looking so hard at wanting to do things. And we can do this as believers ourselves is that as we try to pursue God and look into scripture and try to do our best, that we start refining things down and trying to put restraints on things that God didn't want us to do. And in the meantime, we're missing the big project, big points. We become killjoys, tainting the Sabbath, breaking relationships, adding to scripture and scaring off people that would want to have a deeper relationship with their Messiah. Ultimately, because it'd be better 
to be a sinner than to be whatever we have become because at least sinners got to sit at the seat of Yeshua. They get to sit with him and dine with him. But it was always the religious zealots that got kicked away. They became the mockery of discussion. With that being said, I pray that we are careful to watch and see that we are keeping God the main thing and that we are constantly lifting him up and not ourselves. Let him do that work for us. Let him put us into those positions and keep our motives pure so that we can in turn then be called good and faithful. Have a great rest of your day.